Behind the scenes here at Collective Evolution and The Pulse, we've been tracking a number of devices for almost a decade in the new energy or new energy movement space. So these are essentially devices and inventions that are kind of pushing the boundaries as to what is possible in the energy space, you know, beyond the renewable uh, discussions we always have of wind, solar, geothermal, so on and so forth. Um, so these are, these are like really inventions that not a lot of people are paying attention to and a lot of people just don't even believe exist or don't even believe are real. And one device that caught our attention many years ago was from inventor Paramahamsma Tuwari. And his device was something we ended up closely following and even funding over the years because it really just was very intriguing and it wasn't necessarily breaking any physical laws, making it very difficult to get people to sort of pay attention to. Now, part of the inspiration behind this video is I have a common pet peeve of mine that whenever I hear people talking about what humans need to do as we want to clean up our environment is we need to start embracing these renewable energy technologies we hear about, which are wind, solar, and you know, geothermal. Uh, many well-intentioned change makers are talking about this. A lot of our politicians are talking about stuff like this. And of course, when they make these, when they have these discussions, they're also bringing with it all of these calculations of, of what needs to happen, how many how much carbon uh, humans need to reduce, how much uh, you know, energy reduction we need to also uh, embrace as we change our lifestyles to match you know, what wind, solar, and geothermal can produce. So essentially what's being asked by a lot of these people is, you know what, start, start doing a lot less. Let's go backwards in the amount of energy that we use and produce as a society and, and essentially match what, what we know is possible in wind, solar, and geothermal. Now, I'm, I'm here to say that we don't need to do that. Now, I'm all for humans becoming more mindful, becoming clearer with how they interact with the nature and, and creating harmony in what's going on there. That's 100% what I'm for, and I'm for the reduction of pollution and all these sorts of things. But I'm not for cutting our potential as human beings. I'm not for you know, going towards these technologies in favor of hiding technologies that truly can free humanity in a very meaningful way. So if we're hearing all the time that this is all we have, this is all we can do, how is it possible that even UFOs are flying around out there with no sound, traveling faster than the speed of light, if all we have is wind, solar, and geothermal as the best possible solutions out there, or maybe it's fossil fuels that they're using? All of this is highly unlikely. Something else is going on, and the reality of the situation is, is there are a number of technologies on this planet that can tell us a lot more about what is going on. And humanity does not have to go back into this primitive direction that we are being convinced that we need to go towards. And I honestly think that, that it's time for people to consider why is it that governments are really pushing us towards you know, accepting these primitive renewable technologies as our way forward. The reality of the situation is better technologies do exist. I've seen them with my own eyes. I've watched them be vetted with my own eyes. And it's truly important that we begin discussing this and taking this seriously because they are being suppressed around the world by governments and elites. And I can virtually guarantee that's the case. In the case of the device that I wanna bring your attention to today, no known physical laws are being broken here. The device is simply canceling out a mechanical back torque law that is typical in, in, in physics, um, which is essentially where a device, through the way it moves, um, will produce a, a back torque, which causes a loss of energy, i.e. just less efficiency. So the way this device is set up is it basically cancels out back torque, allowing the device and the machine to produce more energy than what goes into it. So the clip you're about to see is from the film Out of the Void. You will see uh, basically a test session of, of the energy device that, that Tawari created called the Reactionless Generator. Now, tests are conducted in this video by utility engineers, and you'll see the over-unity results that they get, and you'll also see the uh, results that are replicated at the Kirloskar factory where the company's vice president and lead electrical engineer discuss how they replicated these over unit V test results. We will show that the input is less than the output and that is the um, proof that more power can be produced than what power is put into the system. The energy source is the electrostatic um, the field of the atom and the electrostatic field of the electron, they interact without loss of their structural power.
start. Start here by this. Yeah, they are separate, separate actually. You, you, okay. indi independently they are taking. You see, 10 plus. Gora, current, current is how much? Current is 6.5 in one phase, 6.93 in other phase, 10.1 is the other phase. So, 6.6. Three, two, three, four, 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 four. Look, young guy. Look, now this is the input at the motor input. Right. And if 12 kilowatt, 11 kilowatt motor at partially loaded cannot have more than 0.7 power factor. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You multiply here 5.7. 3, 2, 1. 3, 9, 6, 4, and 2.7. Yes. 26. Is how much? 238. 238 <laughs> percent. Because you have gone slightly higher in speed, it was coming 220 percent. Wow. So he said, let us take the second test. It will not change. I said, it will not change. But I was not very clear because that thing is burned and so what will happen? Now they did it and you are getting 238%. Wow. 220 versus 238. It's so nice. Yeah. It's good now. I think... 238% is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad that the uh, machine worked despite that failure. I was a bit worried. So... Something told me, no, no, don't worry, go for the result and see what happens. <laughs> Atom which attracts this electron, again leaves it, attracts it, leaves it, that is electrostatic energy. So that also is doing work. Both are doing work. That work that they are doing is coming as extra power. But their structure remains the same. Because they are not of ordinary so-called matter, but they are of non-matter massless ether. Therefore, ether has got to be once again established. Then there will be meaningful understanding of physics, meaningful understanding of metaphysics, and meaningful understanding of spiritual processes. Prototype what he has built, you know, that attracted us. When Mr. Ramesh and Anand Hunnor interacted with Mr. Tiwari, so that was our first, uh, you know, a starting point rather why did we why we should not take up this why we should not take up this something different something yeah. different something which is unheard i mean uh, all of our country nobody has tried i believe so nobody far. has tried nobody has because tried. the technology is not given to them not given to i contacted many companies and gave presentation and show the vcd also dvd yeah. but nobody showed any interest because they didn't believe it <laughs> Even after seeing the CD, they did not believe it. Yeah. But uh, I just gave a phone call to Mr. Anand, their Vice President Marketing. And within a year, their team, along with Mr. Ramesh and Mr. Anand, they were at, at the Mr. Tiwari's lab. So that is the interest and belief they have. Because <laughs> just with a phone call, they were there within a week's time. And, and after that, you see the result. But, you see. but this will revolutionize the, the way machines are being, machines designed, are being designed or built. Still, we're trying to convince because it's a big barrier to right. tell and convince. Like right. it's, uh, so it's, a it's a breakthrough actually. Right, it's a breakthrough. Uh, yes, and it has come over so long. Uh, it will take some time to bridge it. Basically. Right, you just have to present the data. This is yes. the measurement. You know, it's a simple you measurement. See for yourself. Right. Yes. Yeah. Facts. Right. Going Still back to physics, the, right. till you quantify our see, data will tell. We right. don't need to tell them. So data will speak for right. ourselves. Right. So it's truly fascinating and moving stuff, at least it is for me when I, when I see stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and I want us to consider here, are governments truly being honest with us when they say that renewables is all that we have and that this is what we need to move towards, this wind, this solar, this geothermal? I can pr almost promise you, as I said before, that this is not the case. We have something else and I believe, I truly believe that they know that. 
And perhaps it's better at this point that we start asking the question, what reason would governments and elites have to hold back technology like this for, you know, and others, because there are other devices out there, from humanity? As with anything, our job here is to educate ourselves about what truly is possible and ultimately do our best to organize some sort of grassroots you know, movement towards talking about this stuff, creating new conversation and awareness about these types of devices, such that a people's movement towards a better future can be created. Because I, I really trust that at this point in time, it's clear that the container of government is not going to produce a better world, and that it's ultimately up to us as people to get engaged in the process of creating the future that we truly want to see, even if it starts as simple as having conversations with friends and family about technologies like this. See where it leads. That said, there is one other challenge that we really need to talk about when it comes to energy devices like this that I actually discussed in a recent discussion and podcast episode I had with Jason Quitt. Um, it's actually the video we released just before this one on this channel, and I, I truly want to invite you to check it out because it is perhaps one of the most important elements of this conversation that I believe that most people are missing out on, yet we need to address. Let us know in the comments below, how do you feel in your being when you see devices like this? Do you believe that they're real? Does it inspire you? How can we ultimately move towards a society that embraces technologies like this? What comes to mind when you ask yourself questions like that? Is it possible that it can be done through government or is government not the container for stuff like this? Let us know your thoughts below. That's it, that's all.